Yes, Lord, we just want to exalt you as the greatest, as the highest, as the one who is above all, the one who has power, power to heal. And Lord, we want to just bow before you, almighty God. You are the mightiest. And we just want to submit to your good and perfect will. And we just want to offer you this time we have together today that we would see your kingdom come and your will be done. In Jesus' name, amen. So this morning, um, we're going to be continuing our series looking at um, parables that Jesus told from um, Matthew chapter 13. But before we get into today's parable, um, Adele's just got a quick um, story to share. Um, so about five years ago, I found a sprouting hel helicopter seed in our neighbor's wall, like this one. Oh, it's the camera. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I looked after it and then as it began to shoot roots I planted it into a pot and it began to grow um, and over time the small seed grew until it became this over here a small sycamore tree Matthew thirteen thirty one, he told them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed, which a man took and planted in his field. Though it is the smallest of all seeds, yet when it grows, it is the largest of garden plants and becomes a tree, so that the birds come and perch in its branches. He told them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like yeast that a woman took and mixed into about 30 kilograms of flour until it all worked through the dough. Jesus spoke all these things to the crowd in parables. He did not say anything to them without using a parable. So was fulfilled what was spoken through the prophet. I will open my mouth in parables. I will utter things hidden since the creation of the world. Thank you, Rachel. Thank you, Adele. So today we have two parables. Um, one about a woman, one about a man. One about yeast, one about a mustard seed. So let's just think about those, ponder them for another, another moment. Um, the first one, this king likening the kingdom of heaven to a mustard seed. Now, this isn't a mustard plant like we might know in this country, those who've grown mustard and cress. This is actually a different kind of plant which, which grows particularly in these arid places like you see there. So it will survive in the wilderness and creates almost quite an oasis when it grows into this huge rambling tree. And you can see there just the tiniest of seeds from which it is stemmed. Likewise, then, with the, um, the yeast, this was something we did in junior church, actually, um, during lockdown, where we all took dough, not 30 kilos, but um, a small amount. And you can see there from the left, um, when we just mixed it and then put it away for half an hour um, and how that grows and how that expands as the yeast goes all the way through the dough to the picture on the right. That amount of flour, of course, would have been quite a large amount, enough to feed people, perhaps 100 people for a day. I think there's something really important and common between these two parables and that's the small start so we're going to look at three different things and the first of these is not to despise small beginnings this mustard seed was a lot smaller than the sycamore seed that we have here um, likewise the yeast it's a really small amount isn't it um, and um, I know our scales at home will only resolve four grams. And when you try and put six grams of yeast into a recipe or something, it's almost impossible to measure it out. It's such a small pinch of yeast. And yet 
The woman and the man in these parables, they saw the potential in that small thing, didn't they? Just like Adele saw the potential in this seed that she spotted, um, they saw the potential in the small thing. When the um, people of Israel were returning from, from exile, where they'd been in captivity for, for many years, um, they were rebuilding Jerusalem, and Zerubbabel was given responsibility to rebuild the temple. And, in, and, and during that time, a couple of prophets, amongst them Zechariah, were there to encourage Zerubbabel and the others with God's word. And one of the verses here I've just picked up from Zechariah is, who dares despise um, the day of small things? So um, at this stage, Zerubbabel was just doing the foundations and people could easily say, oh, it's nothing like the old temple. He's only just making a start on this. What, wherever is that going to end up? And will he ever get there? And it will take forever and it's all too hard. But no, the Lord said, don't despise that small start. That's actually what counts in my sight. He's doing what I want him to do. And I think as we think, how do we apply this? It makes us think that, yeah, it's not about having showy programs, important jobs. It's not about the status that this world runs after, is it? Um, bigness. There is actually a word bigness. I checked in the dictionary. <laughs> bigness, we don't have to use that word. He's not the same in God's sight as greatness. When God can take these small things and makes great things out of them. Human validation often misses the point when we evaluate things. And just like this woman and this man, I believe God calls us to have faith in those humble beginnings, to see what he can do from the smallest of things and to show that in faith by taking that faith and putting it into action. So we're going to break up this parable into three three sections. That's the first, and now um, we will we will move on, um, and um, we're going to have a moment of interceding. So what else can we draw from this parable? Well, we've just sung, haven't we? We lay everything we have at the feet of our Savior, and that's very much the idea um, that I want to bring now is that we are faithful with what we have, what we can bring, what we've been given to bring, that we faithfully bring that back to God. You see, the man who planted the mustard seed, he went and planted it in his field, didn't he? And the woman who took the yeast, she mixed it into the flour and, and boldly into a huge amount of flour. But they didn't go running off anything special or they weren't stood there waiting for a particular batch of flour to come along or to go and find the perfect field to plant this tree in. They very much took what they had and they put it in right where they were with the flour that she had in a bag there or in the field that belonged to the man. You see, their faith was in the seed and in the yeast not in the field or the flower. You might not like the situation that we always find ourselves in, um, but that doesn't mean that it's beyond the reach of God's kingdom. So let's not be tempted, as I know sometimes I am, to kind of look for that perfect opportunity, that right situation, but to be faithful with what we have been given in whatever situation we find ourselves. Maybe at work we're not happy with our job, but it means we can still bring God's kingdom to that place. Maybe our neighborhood has changed. People have moved and we don't yet know our neighbors and it's not the same as it was, but we can still bring God's kingdom in that place. Maybe we actually do quite a lot of socializing online, but we're tired of that after a lot of time on the screen. But we can still ask God to show us how to bring his kingdom there or maybe in our leisure activities maybe in our church life we find that things just aren't happening they're not running the same as they did before but we can still bring God's kingdom 
in that place. We can be faithful with what he's given us. Going back to Zechariah and what he said to Zerubbabel, he said, not by power or by might, but by my spirit will you be able to rebuild this temple. So it's not about us being strong or powerful and having any great influence. It's by us being in step with God's spirit, allowing God's spirit to do his work in who we are, in how we behave, how we think, and how we act and what we say. And being true to what God asks us to do. We might see people all around us who are planting carrots and, well, should I plant carrots? Maybe God wants everyone to plant carrots. Maybe they're not listening to God. But if he's given you a mustard seed, go and plant a mustard seed, whether that's what others are doing or, or, or not. Be faithful to who he's made you and the gifts that he's given each one of us. Let's not hide away either. Let's not try and be conformed to the world, but instead be intentional to and true to what he's given us. I've got a couple of really small things that happened this week, which I'm sure many of you got better examples, but they just struck me as yeah, things where we can actually say, I'm going to make a decision not to hide um, who I am, not hide the fact that I'm a child of God, who I am in Christ. Um, one was on us on a training course this Wednesday, and we were looking at a new project management system, how to deliver projects. Um, and the example that the, um, the tutor gave us was, right, I want you to use this method to plan everything you do from when you get out of bed to when you get to your desk at work. So as teams, we had to brainstorm, like, okay, you've got to get up and get dressed and shower and go to work and so on. And I just thought, well, for me, I've, I want to pray in that time. So I had the choice, yeah, do I put that down? And then that became part of what we had to order as a team. But that was true to who I was. Likewise, I was having a conversation at a different point in the week with some colleagues, and we were just talking about environmental stuff and I, I just felt I had to credit the series that we'd had from Dave Bookless here at church from Arosha because that had really challenged some of um, our thinking about changes we are thinking of making in our lives and as I was sharing some of those I thought and this all came because we had some teaching on this in our church and I'm sure, as I say, you've, you've got other, other situations um, and, and ways in which God has, has done um, perhaps much, seemingly much bigger things. But I think that was the message. Don't despise these small things whenever we have that opportunity just to be true to who he's made us in Christ. Then let's be faithful with what we have. And remember and this is just the next verse I want to share from Ephesians, that he is the one who is able to do immeasurably more than we ask or imagine. He's able to take those small beginnings um, because it's his power that is at work within us. So we've thought from these parables about not despising small beginnings and being faithful with what God has given us. And the, the third thing I just wanted to draw our minds to, um, to, to close was see what the Lord will do. And um, yeah, I mean, we, we have it there, don't we? In the, in the tree, just amazed by this huge tree. And just look at the superlatives in those verses. This was the smallest of seeds and it became the greatest or the largest of the garden plants actually a place where the birds would come and rest and find shelter a safe place to stay overnight to nest even it says perch but actually other translations have this sense of making their home there in this tree that's the kingdom of god what god can take a little faith and do a lot with it. There's the verse, isn't there, from 
just a few chapters on where once again Jesus speaks about this mustard seed, faith as small as a mustard seed. You can say to this mountain, move from here to there and it will move. Nothing will be impossible for you. Wow. That is what Jesus is saying, that he can take that small faith and do a lot, a lot with it. I thought of just one example. This is um, Robert Rakes, who um, in about 1780 um, started um, Sunday school in, in Gloucester. There had been one or two Sunday schools before that, but it was a bit of a curiosity till then. He started a movement because he cared for the kids who worked six days in the factories and didn't ever get a chance to go to school or to um, learn to read or to learn about God. And you can see there the statistics that 50 years later, one and a quarter million children were in Sunday school and by 1910, five and a half million. But it wasn't just about the numbers, the scale of this, just the, the, the way it impacted, it actually challenged that kingdom principle, challenged the way in which the country thought about education, that it wasn't something just to be bought for those who could afford it, but everyone had the right to learn to read and to learn about God and be able to read the Bible. Um, what an amazing thing, just the scale of what God can do. The other parable, I think, talks about the extent of what God can do, the yeast. If you think about that pinch of yeast, it's like the 6% of us. This is from LICC. I think we've seen it before in church. The 6% of us who meet together in church, but we all have these different situations through the week um, where God has placed us and the yeast works all the way through the dough such that, yeah, as we're placed there, so that kingdom can spread. I think, Ian, you said this last week, it's way beyond this, the walls of, of this church, the kingdom of God, what God is doing is much bigger reaching than that. So there's a similarity, isn't there, here in a small beginning becoming something great. And yet at the same time, there's a difference, isn't there, in the speed. The yeast takes minutes, half an hour in the airing cupboard. The tree might take, I don't know, 100, 100 or more years. And yet we're called to, to persevere with that faith, aren't we? I think we've seen this, those of as we've been praying for Hannah, haven't we? And seen how at first there was almost imperceivable um, and then there's some small beginnings and now we're seeing some things which we can really praise God for what amazing steps she has, she has taken. And I think what I've learned from, from seeing people pray for Hannah is, is just how to, to persevere. Whatever we see that we keep and I'm praying because it's in God's hands, it's his work. He is doing this, and we look to him, bring him what we have. So even if you think that's small, even if you find yourself in a difficult situation, have faith. This is the Lord's work. He is building his kingdom. I'd like to close with just a few verses from, from Isaiah. Apologies if it's a bit small to read. I'll read aloud. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, declares the Lord. As the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. As the rain and the snow come down from heaven, and do not return to it without watering the earth and making it bud and flourish, so that it yields seed for the sower and bread for the eater. So is my word that goes out from my mouth. It will not return to me empty, but will accomplish what I desire and achieve the purpose for which I sent it. You will go out in joy and be led forth in peace. The mountains and hills will burst into song before you and all the trees of the field will clap their hands. Instead of the thorn bush will grow the juniper. Instead of briars, the myrtle will grow. And this will be for the Lord's renown, for an everlasting sign 
that will endure forever. Let's see what the Lord will do for his glory.